welcome back my name is Felicia and I'm just gonna jump right into the reason why you're here today watching this video I got a new plant and I think I might be a glutton for punishment because I've had this plant type three times already and I don't have either of those plants in my possession as of today and I'm talking about none other than the alocasia specifically can you guys see it can you guys see it I got another alocasia zebrina now I've had this plant in the past I want to say maybe two years ago I bought it and it was almost as full as this one beautiful plant as you guys know what the alocasia zebrina is and I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit closer so you can see what I'm talking about as you guys know with these beautiful plants look at the stem the stem is a showstopper the stem is the reason why a lot of us probably gravitate towards this plant it is absolutely gorgeous I went to Home Depot earlier this week to get some things for the house I think some light bulbs things like that I went over to the plant section I saw this kind of tucked away had to leave with it the reason why I'm kind of like uh, a little weary is because I've had alocasias as I mentioned in the past I've had an alocasia poly I've had the Zabrina and I've also had another one which I can't remember the name if I have a picture of my old plant I'll insert it here if not I'll just insert a stock photo alocasias are stunning plants some people do really well with alocasia care I'm one of those people where it's kind of hit or miss out of all three of those plants I probably had my alocasia poly the longest and I've had it for less than a year my alocasia zebrina that I had before it probably lasted all of six months in my home at the time it just started dropping leaves now dropping leaves stems what have you with plants that is a common thing and it's something that you will see particularly in the cooler weather months but my previous alocasia zebrina it, it was pretty much down to a stump I lost all of the leaves I think I maybe had about 10 leaves when I say leaves I mean stem not like the actual I'm not talking about this I'm talking about the the entire stem of the plant I went from 10 to having zero I said you know what let me keep the plant I'll continue to care for it as if it still had its beautiful leaves and then after a while I just kind of felt silly watering the stump so I got rid of it I've been on a mission to find another one I've seen some here and there but nothing that was worth me purchasing I've seen some small ones I've seen some where there was some damage to the leaves where this one actually has a leaf on here now that has a little bit of damage kind of to be honest it was caused by me when I brought the plant home can you guys see the rip when I brought the plant home I had a bunch of things in my hand I dropped one of those things and it kind of fell into the leaf so this, the leaf did rip and this one is also I'm glad it happened to this leaf because it also has like some you see like some browning at the tip so I'm glad that that's the only one that got damaged and I noticed that there's also a stem that's missing a leaf altogether can you guys see this one this one doesn't have a leaf at all and I think that might have happened in store I probably didn't notice that notice it at the time but other than those two imperfections it's a beautiful beautiful plant for me at least it also has a new stem here in the center hopefully you guys can see that you see that a new leaf that hasn't opened up yet so I, I'm just so glad that I got my hands on it now I want to go over how to care for this plant with you but I'm not going to give you any tips, any personal tips, because obviously it didn't work for me in the past. So I'm going to go on Plantarina's website and we're going to read about what she has to say about the Zebrina. So one of the first questions you should consider when purchasing an alocasia or any plant in general, I've said this in the past and I'll say it again, I feel like anyone can care for a plant, even someone who feels they don't have a green thumb. Anyone can care for a plant as long as you have the right growing conditions, right? So lighting, water, just all of that stuff that a plant needs, as long as you can give those things to a plant, you can take care of a plant. Now, I know some of us live in places where we have an abundance of light. Sometimes there's situations where there's not enough light. In those instances, you can just supplement for that. I have a plant stand. I'll insert a photo of it if you guys haven't seen it already. But I have a, I call it my plant stand, but really it's a bookshelf. I made it my plant stand. But I've attached grow lights to that. So again, I use that to supplement because I don't get a ton of light in my home, particularly where the plants currently are. So, I mean, you can do things like that. There's always a workaround, you can do it. So according to Plantarina, one of the first things you're probably wondering is how much light do I give my plant? 
Plantarina says that the Alocasia Zebrina likes moderate to bright sunlight. It's ideal for the Alocasia Zebrinas. Um, for healthy growth, they require strong indirect light. Indirect light meaning you don't want to put it right up to the window where like the sun is just beaming. You want to bring it back a bit, like a foot or two or three, and let it get some indirect light. So not direct sunlight because they're not going to like that. Trust me, I know. But they still want to get some light. And plants are so weird like that because you want to give them light but not too much. You want to give them water but not too much. And that's just how it goes with plants, unfortunately. It also says here, Zebrinas can also live at a lower light level, although they struggle in low light. Because this plant grows towards the sun, turning it when watering it will help it grow properly. So what that means is, if you have your plant in a certain space in your home, let's just say you have the plant like this. It's just always like this, it's in the same spot, you water it, it gets its light, it's good. But what you want to do is constantly rotate the plant. And Plantarina is suggesting that every time you water the plant, you just rotate it. And in doing so, you're making sure that the plant gets enough sunlight all around the plant. You want like a good 360 of light on the plant. You don't want the sun to just hit one spot, in other words. So as far as water, she says watering a plant once a week is ideal for the Zebrina. These plants prefer wet soil. However, <laughs> there's a big however, they are prone to root rot. If you guys are plant parents, or even if you're not, root rot is when you're giving your plant too much water and then the soil tends to get soggy. I've had situations where I've had plants that did get root rot, unfortunately, and I had to, I mean, you can recover, most plants can recover from root rot, but it really does take a lot of care. So just be careful, you wanna water it, keep the soil moist, but don't overwater it because it's not gonna like that. As far as the cooler weather months, which is what I struggled with my first round with the, my first go around with the Alocasia Sabrina, to avoid overwatering and root rot in the winter, leave two inches of the top soil dry in between watering. So she's just saying in the winter time, you wanna just either stick your finger in there, get a watering meter, and just make sure that the top stays dry. You don't want the entire thing to be damp. She also goes on to say that prolonged periods of dehydration, so not watering the plant, will lead to some browning. So again, you wanna give it water, but not too much. You wanna avoid going very long without watering because it doesn't like that either. See what I mean about this plant being really finicky? Let me bring it into the frame so you guys can actually watch it and not me. Can you guys see it a little bit there? All right, let's move on to temperature. So it says maintaining an appropriate temperature range for Alocasia Zebrinas is one of the most critical aspects of maintenance. Again, I can attest to this. It says the Alocasia Zebrina is sensitive to the cold and even a minor chill will result in leaf loss. Now again, when I had my first Alocasia Zebrina, I noticed in the cooler weather months, that's when I started seeing a lot of leaves and stems dropping, so be wary. It says it should be maintained at a room temperature within 60 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So just keep that in mind. As far as humidity, as you guys know, a lot of our plants, they do like humidity, especially our tropical plants. So it says because Zebrinas are from the rainforest, they require a humid climate to flourish properly. And you can create humidity. If you live in a place that has all seasons, then you can create a humid environment. Of course, you're gonna have your heat on, but you don't want the plants to get direct heat. Like if you have any vents, keep them away from the vents. What you can do for your plants to create a humid environment is just to simply get a humidifier, or you can kind of create a humid environment. I've seen videos on YouTube in the past where folks would get like a little bowl, put some rocks in it, put water on it, and then they would put the plant on top of that. So you can try that. There's different ways you can create humidity for your plants, but just know that is really important for tropical plants like the Alocasia. She then goes into fertilizer, and to be completely honest, I don't fertilize all of my plants. Matter of fact, I don't think I've fertilized any of them this year. It's not a bad thing, but your plants will appreciate some fertilizer. So according to Plantarina, she says the plant thrives on a slow release variant of a popular household fertilizer. She doesn't really list any specific names, so if there's one that you like and you prefer, feel free to use that one. The last and probably most important thing, especially if you have pets or young children, is that this plant is toxic. So, I mean, a lot of kids, if they're older, they're not gonna eat a plant, but I mean, our kids do some crazy kid things, right? And then our plants. So you wanna make sure if your pets tend to nibble on your plants, 
please keep them away from the alocasia zebrina because this is a toxic plant it's been a while since I purchased myself a new plant. I will be bringing some more plants back into the mix. I've had, at one point I mentioned in a past video, at the height of my plant collection, I probably had close to 40 plants. Now I have under 20 and I'm in no rush to rebuild my plant collection, but now that we have a, a different space and I have a better idea of where I'd like to station things, I'm gonna add some more plants to the mix. I'm the type of plant parent that loves simple, easy to care for plants. This is not the best representation of that, but I like your snake plants, your ZZ plants, things that are really easy to care for that you can kind of water it, give it its light, care for it, and just kind of set it and forget it. But with this plant, I, I just couldn't help myself. I had to get it again. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was short and sweet today. If you have any recommendations on how to care for Alocasia zebrinas or Alocasias in general, because I definitely need those tips, please leave them for me down below in the comments. And if not, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.